Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explaining about gear tooth vernier calipers. So this instrument it will be used for the measurement of the gear thickness as well as the height of the gear tooth. So let us start with the basic theory of the gear tooth vernier caliper. So in the part of the introduction just you can see the basic construction of this instrument. So in this gear tooth vernier calipers, we are having a two vernier scales. Just you can see, this is the horizontal vernier scale, and this one is our vertical vernier scale. So this instrument it will be used onto the principle of the main scale reading as well as the vernier scale reading as we already learned into the vernier caliper but with the help of this instrument we can use the measurement for the height of the tooth as well as the width of the tooth so from this horizontal vernier scale and this is our main scale from horizontally as well as for the vertically so here my fixed jaw and movable jaw so this fixed jaw and movable jaw it will be used for the measurement of the width of the gear tooth and with the help of this vertical vernier scale we can adjusting by this and this is used to measure the height of the gear teeth so from horizontally and vertically both the end it will be having a lock nut or you can say after arranging this fixed jaw movable jaw with the horizontal vernier scale as well as from the vertical vernier scales we can use this lock nut and after this we can take the readings from the both the vernier scales so this horizontal vernier it will be used to measurement of the width of the gear tooth and this vertical vernier scale that will be used for the measurement of the height of the gear tooth or you can say depth of the gear tooth so let us start for this gear tooth vernier that is an instrument just you can see and which will be used to measuring the peach line tooth thicknesses and in this theory we are also making the relations for both the width as well as the height of the gear tooth so it consists of the two perpendicular arms on which the main scales and the vernier scales are engraved so this one this is the horizontal and this one is my vertical or two vernier scales one and two so one of the scale we already discussing horizontal scale that will be used to measure the depth it means at the caudal addendum of the gear at which its pitch line thickness to be measured and the second scale you can say the vertical scale that will be used to measure the actual pitch line thickness also called the caudal thickness then the measured value are compared with the calculated values now just you can see the gear tooth vernier caliper arrangement so here in this figure just you can see this is only the consideration of the single gear teeth for the deriving of the relations of the this width or you can say w it will be indicating as a width of the gear teeth and this small edge that will be nothing but depth or you can say height of the gear tooth so just you can see this dotted line it will be noted as a peach circle and this tooth of the gear that will be having a two extreme points l and n so just you can see this l and it will be noted as a width of the teeth and from this l to n point straight line so P to Q that will be nothing but height of the gear teeth. So we are interested to making a relationship or you can say deriving a relationship to calculating the width of the gear tooth as well as the height of the gear tooth. 
then rest of the things just you can see this is my o point so from o to l this is nothing but the radius of the pitch and here that will be the theta angle and this p that will be perpendicular so now we will deriving the relations for the width and height so just you can see length ln so length ln so from this point to this point that will be nothing but w or you can say width or you can say simple way arc l m and n this one this is also w now just you can see point m which will be onto the pitch circle so from pitch circle to top of the teeth that will be nothing but it is my addendum so length m q this one from pitch circle to top of the tooth this will be addendum after this just you can see l p plus p n this distance once again it will be w or you can say width but just you can see l p that will be nothing but it will be equal to p n so twice so twice l p that will be equal to w or you can say width so width is equal to twice into l p this is my equation number one now just you can take the triangle l p and this o just you can see this triangle l p o so this is my right angles so just you can see just you can applying the sine theta so here that will be my theta so sine theta equal to l p upon l o now simplify this one so l p that will be equal to l o sine theta just put the value of l o so l to o this line right so this is nothing but capital r or you can say radius of the pitch circle so l p that will be equal to r into sine theta so as from the angles l o and p so here that will be the right angles if we considering the whole gears so if it will be considering as a whole gear so it will be total 360 degrees and here i will only considering as a single teeth right so teeth after this teeth it will be the blank space over here then after one more teeth then blank space one more teeth blank space so this theta it will be only related the fourth portion of the single teeth right so one that is my teeth and one for the blank portion so here that will be the theta plus theta plus theta plus theta so four times so total angle of this gear it will be 360 so here theta equal to 360 divided by 4 into n why 4 because this is the one quadrant this is second and similar way for the blank space because one teeth one blank space one teeth so it will be four times so angle LOP that means theta equal to 360 by 4N. So just you can simplify this where capital N that will be the number of teeth. So theta equal to 90 by N. So just put the value of theta into this one and just you can use the LP into equal to r into sine 90 by n so just theta it will be put into this one and just you can make the simplifications lp equal to r sine theta so now just you can put the value of this lp into this equation number one so what happens width of the 
the that will be equal to twice into just put the value of LP from this. So R sin 90 by and so that is my equation number 2. After this, just you can see this is my geometry. Now important terminology for the gear module. Module that means pitch circle diameter divided by number of teeth. So small m module that will be equal to 2 into r because this is the pitch circle diameter. So twice r and it will be simplified as a capital R equal to nm by 2. Just put the value of r into previous equations. So what we get width of the gear tooth that will be equal to 2 into just put the value of r. So nm by 2 over here and sine 90 by n. Simplify these equations. So width of the gear tooth that will be nothing but nm sine 90 by n. So this is my first relation for calculating the width of the tooth. So here just you can have number of teeth of the gear then the module then you can easily identifying or you can say calculating the width of the gear tooth. After this now we will calculating the depth or you can say height of the gear tooth. So one more relations just you can see O to Q. So this point O and just you can see up to the top of the gear. So this is my O Q. So Q is nothing but dividing into two parts. So O to M and M to Q. Right? But just you can see we are developing the relations O M capital this one O to M. So this is nothing but it is my radius r and r is equal to nm by 2. So just you can put the value of r over here nm by 2 and that will be also equal to om distance. And for the metric gear we have the some assumptions like that the addendum that will be equal to the size of the module. So mq that is my addendum because as per the definition of the addendum from pitch circle diameter to top of the thread. So mq means addendum or you can say module or small m. So just put the value of om that is my nm by 2 and mq that is my small m for the oq distance. Right. So this is the relations we derived. After this just you can see this is the terminology. Now from the figure one more relations from O Q this one. Now it will be once again dividing into two parts O to P and P to Q. Now from this angle L P and O that we already use into the for calculating the width of the thread. Now for the vertical distance so we have taken a uh, cos rules so cos theta that will be equal to this o to p divided by l o or you can say capital r directly so for simplify op that will be equal to r cos theta just put the value of r and theta from the previous sequence. So capital R that will be nothing but nm by 2 and theta equal to 90 by n. So simplify these two equations. Just you can see. Now put the value of this op into previous equations or you can say over here this equation number 4 and oq that will be from previous ones. So OQ we have already derived the relations just you can see over here nm by 2 plus module and that will be equal to OP. OP means here nm by 2 cos 90 by n. So nm by 2 cos 90 by n plus PQ. So from this equation number 4. 
now just you can see what is the distance for p to q that is nothing but it is our h so just put the value of h as a pq so pq that is equal to h and that is equal to nm by 2 plus m minus nm by 2 cos 90 upon n the simplify the equations and that will be the depth of the gear tooth that will be nothing but nm by 2 into 1 plus 2 by capital n minus cos 90 upon n so these two relations all derived and that will be also used for the calculating the depth of the thread so just you have number of teeth and the value of module so you can easily calculating the width of the gear tooth as well as the depth of the gear tooth with the help of this theory or you can also compare with the practically with the gear tooth one year caliper readings so i hope you understand these two theories if you like this then subscribe and share modi mechanical engineering tutorials thank you so much and keep watching